If you're just joining us, we're in Annapolis, Maryland with Chesapeake Lightcraft building a 20-foot double outrigger sailing paddling canoe from scratch. In the previous videos, we've already built the main hull and deck with thin strips of western red cedar. We also built components of the akas or crossbeams that hold the amas on the outside of the main hull. Today we're going to laminate the underside of the deck and the main hull, but we bring in some additional expertise because we're going to do this lamination with carbon fiber and vacuum bagging. All right, so we are just getting the final prep done on the hull and the underside of the deck and some other things that we're going to vacuum bag. And Joey from Turning Point Boatworks is here and he's going to give us a hand. Uh, you guys make some super high-end composite kayaks. Yeah, kayaks, yeah. You do vacuum bagging all the time. All the time, yeah. You guys do resin infusion mostly? Yes, that's all we do is resin infusion. We do build for another company that is hand layup, no bagging, uh, but we only build like one of those a month. But okay. everything else is all resin infusion. So obviously Joey is the expertise here <laughs> and going to help us along with the vacuum bagging, um, carbon, and a yeah. thin layer of glass over that. Can you walk us through the process? We're going to put all the cloth on, wet out all the cloth on the boat, make sure it's thoroughly saturated, then start put the consumables on it, vacuum bag it, pull it all down, and that'll consolidate everything to the boat itself. So we'll get a nice, strong, clamped lamination? Yeah, yeah. So it, it does two things. It straightens the fibers, uh, which makes them you know stiffer and stronger. And the other thing, too, is we get rid of all of the excess resin that normally would be there that we would try to screed off by hand, which we'll never be able to do. This will squeeze it out, kind of like a sponge. And with that, we'll save some weight there. Yes, and it'll also be stronger because of that, because the resin really doesn't do anything as far as the strength is concerned. Uh, it, it plays a small part, uh, but you know, having excess resin will actually make it more brittle. Like, what are some of the things we have to watch out for? What are some challenges <laughs> with, with doing this that um, your expertise will fill us? Yeah, in? so it's, it's the shape of the boat is, is uh, going to be unique because I'm used to working in a mold. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a flange area, all that kind of thing. So this is a 3D object. Uh, and the big concern here is to make sure that when we put pressure on the bag, we're putting it on both sides of the, the, the hull or whatever it is, the deck, so that we don't distort it out of shape. Because mm -hmm. the bag pressure you know, at one atmosphere is roughly 2,000 pounds per square foot, mm -hmm. which would turn this into a flat panel mm -hmm. if we didn't bag on both sides. And this thing is still pretty like, I don't know if you guys can see that, it's pretty easy <laughs> still. So if we didn't have the molds, it'd be pretty easy to right. laminate it out of shape. Right, exactly. We don't want to introduce any twist. Uh, the other thing, we don't want to pull it in, um, you know, kind of like a you know cheap taco. <laughs> uh, so we want it to remain the shape that it's supposed to be so that when all the ancillary parts that go into it, they will fit. Okay. And you're not forcing against it. All right. Nice. We're going to start with vacuum bagging and laying out the underside of the deck. First, we have to cut off all the sharp corners so that it doesn't puncture the vacuum bag. We then prepare the vacuum bag itself. Is redundancy on the seal. The more material you've got, the better off you are. So I'm going to run it up both sides of it. So the fold is right here. Just keep rolling it back. We use this tacky tape to seal the edges of the vacuum bag. We then seal the underside of the deck with a thin layer of epoxy. The cedar will absorb a lot of the epoxy and we'll let it partially cure before we start laminating. That way we still get a chemical bond between this layer of epoxy and the epoxy within the lamination. We're going to be doing the main hull of the boat next, so we do the same thing and just seal it with a thin layer of epoxy. Pre-cutting so the... Uh reinforcement for the area on the deck where the uh, mast step is going to be. So this is the bow. This is where the mast is going to come through. So we're just reinforcing right there. The area of the deck where the mast passes through is called the mast partner. This needs to be super strong so we use four layers of six ounce carbon to reinforce it. stretches. Oh, that's perfect because it's inside the area. 
After we laid up the mass partner section of the deck, we laid up the rest of the deck with some more six ounce carbon. And when I'm going across, you can hear that little like bubble popping sound. Uh -huh. That's pushing air. Once we had the carbon fully saturated, we then added a thin layer of three and a half ounce S-glass over it to protect it. After the carbon and fiberglass are fully saturated, we begin to put on the consumable materials. The first consumable material is called peel ply, which is a release fabric. This peel ply will help absorb any extra resin. And once everything is fully cured, the peel ply gets peeled off and it leaves a nice textured surface, which is ready for paint or any additional bonding. Although for maximum bond strength, you should still sand this surface. And if you're painting the surface, you'll probably want to sand a higher grit anyway, depending on your paint system. After we add the peel ply, we then add the breather material, which will also help absorb extra resin, but more importantly, will allow even vacuum pressure across the whole surface. Once the breather material is on, we place the whole deck in the vacuum bag that we prepped beforehand, and then we seal the vacuum bag up. Then we insert the tube from the vacuum pump into the vacuum bag in a few folds of breather material. And once everything is all sealed up, we turn the vacuum on and you can see it suck all of the air out of the vacuum bag. Joey then uses this ultrasonic leak detector to listen for any air leaks on the edges of the bag. We want to prevent all or as many small air leaks as possible so that we maintain vacuum for the whole time that this lamination is curing. All right, we're all laid up vacuum bag is on the vacuum pump is on we got a super nice clamp so this will all stay on the vacuum pump will stay on until this stuff is cured and then uh, maybe probably tomorrow at some point we'll be able to pull it all off and check out our work but in the meantime we're gonna get the hull ready to do the same exact thing first on the outside of the hull and then uh, tomorrow or the next day on the inside. I've always wanted to build something using like carbon and vacuum bagging and just kind of take advantage of that technology just to get a lighter, stronger uh, structure, whatever it is. It's super cool to be able to learn from someone like Joey who's super experienced in it and, and to see how it's done and the right way to do it. And it'll be really cool to see the results as well. So really exciting. So it's pretty cool. You can already see like the breather material getting a little bit saturated. So that's just all excess res resin that'll just come off with the breather material. It's just stuff that uh, extra resin that isn't necessary within the actual layup itself. And that's part of what makes it, what makes it a little bit lighter and a little bit stronger because the layup itself will have the perfect resin uh, to carbon ratio. And then any excess just gets pulled off with this breather material and the peel ply also, of course, which is just under the breather material. Once we finished laying up the underside of the deck, it was time to lay up the main hull. 
which is pretty much the same exact process, except we start with a very thick layer of fiberglass on the very bottom of the boat, just for added protection and puncture resistance. Perfect, yeah, just drop down. Wow, look at that. That was pretty. That's what we wanted. We laid the six ounce carbon, trimmed it, wetted it out. Then we added the three and a half ounce S glass. We could only get it in 30 inch wide rolls, so we just did two lengths and overlapped it in the middle. Then we added the peel ply. And the breather material. We we're gonna pick it up, back drape, and we're gonna work underneath the seal it, stuff everything underneath before we drop it back down, and then we'll put the uh, Vacuum. Albacon. So. <laughs> this is going to work out. But it's going to work out one way or another. Right. It was a bit challenging making sure the vacuum bag laid flat inside the hull and didn't bridge over concave curves. So while the vacuum pump was pulling all the air out of the vacuum bag, we worked quickly just to make sure that the vacuum bag was sitting nice and flat against the inside of the hull. the next day and we're just about to take off all the plastic and freedom material and peel ply and check out the underside of the deck. We'll do that first and then we'll do the main hall in a little bit. I'm so excited to see it. I can't wait. Final unveiling. Look at that surface, that's amazing. So, now it's deck done. Yeah. Besides cutting up the holes. Huh? It the edges. Well, then so. We got a little bit left over. Get the sand to trim off Just grind it off. You're so excited? <laughs> so excited, Steve? I am very excited. <laughs> All right, we get to do this one now? Yeah. All right, yes.
carbon is laid in there, stuck in there with that spray tack, and uh, we're ready basically. Just gonna take a quick lunch, but then we're gonna wet this all out with epoxy. Make sure it's fully saturated, then we'll get that S-glass on. Then we'll get everything else on, all the consumables, the peel ply, the breather material, and then the vacuum bag, and get this thing vacuumed out. It looks so cool with the dry carbon in here. Well, it's another day that feels like Christmas morning because we get to unwrap our present here and see how the inside turned out. Are you excited? And just like that, a relatively flimsy hull is now transformed into an incredibly stiff and strong canoe ready to start adding the components. Huge shout out to Joey for coming in and helping us, teaching us the ways of high-end composite work. Check out Joey's website in the link in the description. His shop is in Richmond, Virginia, so if you want to check out some of his high-end kayaks, he also does repairs and custom work and a bunch of other things. So check him out, and thank you, Joey, for coming in. Make sure to check out the Tulip Shop. We just got in brand new shirts. It's a very special year this year because our very favorite crew member turned 10. 10% of these profits are going towards the rescue organization that rescued her from a high kill shelter. So extra special year for Jetty. 10 shirt says old dogs rule. So maybe some of you can relate to that. And in the design, her bandana is all the flags of every island and country she's been to. So it is extra, extra special. And my best friend did the design. So we're super excited about this one. Go check out the tool shop. We got other stuff in there too. Link is right in the description. Well, you say thank you for watching. Happy birthday!